Modern research has given us a really clear understanding of what causes ADHD, and some of what the most popular online mental health and celebrity influencers are pushing is completely wrong. So what causes ADHD? Is it genetics, bad parenting, childhood trauma, or something else entirely? We're also going to answer the questions, can you cure ADHD and can you develop ADHD later in life? This will be based on both the most high quality, up-to-date research and my personal experience as a psychologist who works a lot with the ADHD community. In my earlier video on how ADHD is tested and diagnosed, I briefly alluded to some controversies around the cause of ADHD, so let's start there. There are some very prominent online influencers and e-celebrities who talk about the cause of ADHD being bad parenting and trauma. Some examples of people who purport this hypothesis are people such as Gabor Mate, a Canadian physician who has been doing the rounds on many big online interview shows such as Joe Rogan. Now this hypothesis that ADHD is caused by childhood trauma is quite appealing because it's very intuitive. After all, trauma does play a massive role in shaping mental health and it is undeniable that trauma can exacerbate ADHD symptoms. And this argument is very appealing to people who see a connection between their own traumatic experiences and their mental health struggles. And this makes it easy to attribute ADHD to childhood adversity. However, this interpretation of ADHD risks blurring the lines between correlation and causation. Just because trauma often co-occurs with ADHD, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the cause. In fact, there is high quality research that examined this exact thing to see if there is a link between ADHD and early childhood trauma. And all of this research points in the exact same direction. So if we were to imagine a pie chart that explained all the different factors that contribute to ADHD, we can think of variance as the percentage of the pie that is explained by each factor. And in this case, the role of early post-birth environment contributed something between zero and 6% of the variance. What this tangibly means is that the role of parenting and early childhood trauma on causing ADHD is little to none. Now this isn't to dismiss the importance of treating trauma nor to absolve parents of responsibility. If someone has a child with ADHD, it's their responsibility to get educated and to try their best. But when it comes to understanding the cause of ADHD, all of the evidence points to other factors. And if we really wanna help individuals with ADHD and we wanna understand the disorder, we need to look at what the bulk of the evidence is saying rather than just oversimplifying or going with our gut and following an explanation that feels intuitive and emotionally satisfying. Before we move on to the next explanation for what causes ADHD, I wanna answer one of the questions that I brought up earlier. Can ADHD develop later in life? There's a bit of controversy about this topic because the official DSM criteria states that symptoms must have been present prior to the age of 12. Recently, however, some people both in the general population and the academic spheres have been discussing the possibility of adult onset ADHD. After reviewing the latest literature, academic opinions, as well as my own experience in working with many people with ADHD, here's the conclusion that I've come to. Adult onset seems rare, but not impossible. However, the majority of what appears to be adult onset ADHD is not adult onset ADHD. Instead, what is happening is that people earlier on in a person's life have missed the symptoms of ADHD. They've missed the diagnosis. And this could be because of a childhood where people just didn't pay enough attention to the child, so they would have missed things that were going on. Or it could have been at the other end where the environment and the early life was extremely supportive um, to the point where the symptoms of ADHD just didn't cause enough problems to really be picked up by a medical professional. Okay, so if ADHD isn't caused by bad parents or childhood trauma, then what is it caused by? Several papers examining this exact question began to look even earlier into a person's life before early childhood to the period of gestation where the child is still in the belly. These papers examined the effects of things that could have impacted the pregnancy. For example, the mother having to go into the surgery, the mother getting extremely ill, um, things such as drugs, alcohol, or neurotoxic poisons getting into the mother's body while she's pregnant. Basically, they examined what happens if you do things that could severely impact the fetus or the child in development, um, and does that cause ADHD later in life? And the results of several different studies examining the question of what causes ADHD that looked at the pre-birth environment all pretty much had the same conclusion, that around 20% of the variants could be explained by this pre-birth environment. Things like surgery or damage to the fetus or the ingestion of drugs or alcohol by the mother. I'll quickly answer the question now of can ADHD be cured that I promised I'd answer in the beginning before I move on to the next factor that causes ADHD. So I plan on making a full breakdown on the different types of ADHD medications and therapy for ADHD and how they work, but consider this the TLDR version. When researchers examined if there is a cure for ADHD, 
this is what they found. Around 20 to 60% of people who received an ADHD diagnosis, particularly early in life, they will eventually have a significant decrease in symptoms to the point where they no longer meet diagnostic criteria for ADHD. But they will still have symptoms and struggle with inattention, hyperactivity, restlessness, and impulsivity to a greater degree than the general population. So while there is no cure for the ADHD brain, most of the time with a combination of medication, behavioral therapy, environmental support, and ADHD coaching, people can manage their symptoms down from a severe to a mild or moderate level. Okay, so if we have between 0 and 6% of ADHD being explained by trauma, and we have around 20% of ADHD being explained by issues in pregnancy, then what about genetics? How much of a role does genetics actually play? A lot. Like, a lot. In fact, when looking at single studies and meta-analyses that combine the results of multiple studies, when you look at research done on siblings, twins, and families, the results are so consistent, it's staggering. ADHD is extremely heritable, with between 70 and 80% of ADHD being able to be explained by genetic factors alone without any other factor needed. Now, when you consider the amount of variance explained by genetics, combine that with the variance explained by pre-birth environment, there's not a lot of room left in that pie chart for any other factor to really contribute to the cause of ADHD. Now that we've covered the main causes of ADHD, let's talk about some of the struggles that people with ADHD might face, like ADHD brain freeze. If you have ADHD, you might have encountered something called ADHD brain freeze, a phenomenon where you want to begin a task, but you feel stuck like a computer with too many programs running. In order to fix that, there are practical strategies to break the freeze and make the freeze less likely to occur. I have a full video on the topic on my profile or in the description. 